Okay, so without her song, it would be sound alone, but it was more than that, more even than her voice and ours among the meaningless plungings of water and the wind, and so forth. Notice that that's referred to as meaningless plungings. The sea has no meaning. The ocean, for Wallace Stevens, okay, we're not talking about Christian vision here, okay? He's, he's trying to find where meaning comes from. Because remember last time we talked about how Christianity, the faith, and all that got hollowed out by the experiences of World War I, World War II, the Depression, all of the stuff that was happening, um, the flu epidemic, all of that. Faith got hollowed out. And so he's looking for the source of meaning, and he says, by itself, the sea doesn't have meaning. And so he says, it's meaningless plunging. And then skip to the next, it's at line 34. It was her voice that made the sky acutest at its vanishing. She measured to, she measured to the hour its solitude. And this line you should like put up on your mirror in your bathroom or put it on the microwave oven. She was the single artificer in, the, excuse me, of the world in which she sang. She was the single artificer of the world in which she sang. There is no world without her song. What's an artist? One who makes, one who makes, artisan. Okay. Art, she creates the world. She is the single creator of the world in which she sings. When she sang, the sea, whatever self it had, became the self that was her song. The sea changes and becomes whatever she sings it to be. Okay? Um, for she was the maker. Um, then we, as we beheld her striding there alone, knew that there never was a world for her except the one she sang and singing made. Now Stevens here is talking about where does what is reality, what is truth? Pardon? It's your imagination. It's in your mind. What does this do to um what do you think about this idea? Well, this kind of makes me think of something that um as a musician, like hearing this, um because Mr. Plash is a theory teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he has really um, accurate uh, musical ears, right? And so every single thing he's hearing, he's constantly hearing pitches mm -hmm. and constantly analyzing them. Whether it's like like he'll analyze the pitch of like a knock on a door, and like he'll analyze like the pitch of the bell, and he'll be oh that's an F, and he'll be hearing music in everything, and so. Last year we asked him, we were like, Mr. Plash, like, is there anywhere you go where you could like turn off your musical mind and just relax? Because it's like almost, you know, it drives me crazy sometimes. And he's like, yeah, um, I like to go to the beach and listen to the waves because the waves don't have a particular pitch. They just kind of do their thing, and it's the only thing that he can listen to and not analyze. Because there's so many different sounds, and it's random, I guess. I guess, yeah. That's interesting. What about the idea that that everybody makes their own reality? That the sunset to one person may be beautiful, to somebody else it may be ugly. The color of paint on a house may be beautiful or it's ugly. Perspective. Yeah. It's perspective? Okay. Well, it's kind of like history. We only remember what we document. It's know? like opinion. I don't know. Opinion? I think it's one of those things that it's true, but we can't take it too far because then we become our own gods. Ah, I see that's well, what I thought. Yeah. Okay, she said, it's one of those things that it's true, but if we take it too far, we become our own gods. And that's a lot of what he's talking about. Because if, if reality, and I mean, okay, the wilderness in Tennessee, that's fine. If you want to say it means this. Or the ocean, if you want to say it means that. 
But when you start talking about other things that are true or not true, real or not real, you can wind up with, if, if nothing is absolutely true, it's just what I think about it, it has serious consequences, yeah. Now, he, once again, he does not believe that if you run your car into the tree that you have been thinking about, you can just think it out of existence so your, tree, your car keeps going. But, but he does, he is talking about where does reality reside? Where does truth reside? And he's saying that's well, largely in our minds, right? So that's, I mean, that's a big deal. And he talks about this, he takes this even farther in 40, around 44. Raymond Fernandez, tell me if you know why when the singing ended and we turned toward the town, tell why the glassy lights, the lights in the fishing boats at anchor there as the night descended. Okay, so what time of day is it at this point? Night. And what do they see? Boats. Lights on the fishing boats, right? Why did the lights on the fishing boats tilting in the air, they mastered the night and portioned out the sea, fixing emblazoned zones and fiery poles. Look at number five. As with the geographic zones and poles of the earth, emblazoned, ornamented, blah, blah, blah. So the geographic zones and the poles of the earth. I want you just to pretend for a minute, erase everything for just a second. Think back to maybe fifth grade or sixth grade, something like that. And you've got fishing boats and you have poles and emblazoned zones. What do fishermen have to do with the North Pole and the South Pole and maybe Columbus or something? I don't know. Back in those days. Why would the pole, yes? Like a compass. Like a compass, yes. How did they, how did fishermen know which way to go? They use compasses and? Maps. Light. Yeah. Lighters. Stars. 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 It used to be, yeah, she's, yeah, exactly. They would use, they would say, okay, that's the North Star, and if we're going this way, and that's where Orion is, or whatever, they would, they would navigate using the stars as maps. But when the singing stops and the sun goes down, what are now the things that master the night, portion out the sea? What, I mean, look at the poem. It says, what is different it? Different boats. Different lights on different boats. Now tell me, if, there are, if you are out there, you, you lose power on your boat or whatever in the middle of the Gulf, and are you going to navigate by the stars, or are you going to navigate by fishing boat lights? What's the problem with navigating by lights on fishing boats? They move. They move. And change. And change. And you know where they're going, right? So suddenly we've got this new way of portioning out the sea, drawing latitude and longitude. What has mastered the sea now? It's human-created fishing lights, or boats on, or excuse me, lights on fishing boats, which move. And so there isn't a constant, right? The meaning of this portion of the sea. Your latitude and longitude is now determined by something that some guy put on his fishing boat. Maybe he's not fishing, maybe he's like with Jimmy Buffett and they're just partying. So you don't know where it's gonna go. So it could be a problem, right? So what is it that determines truth, reality, direction, all of that? He's saying it's in the eye of the beholder and it's humanly created. Okay, that is Wallace Stevens, American poet. Okay, uh, for next time, who's next on our list? Is it Elliot Davidson? Don't forget your Emily Davidson post. Yeah, don't forget that. Um, check online. Don't forget your Emily Dickinson post. Just go ahead and post that. If you haven't posted a thesis statement or something, go ahead and post that. And I think we're doing Elliot next. Is that right? Yeah, the love song with Jay Check the, check the readings.